If you want to get from Los Angeles to the Bay Area today, you really have two choices, driving or flying. But what happens when we add high-speed rail to the mix? Well, we're gonna dive into those details today. This is City Nerd. Remember to like if you actually like the video and subscribe if you actually want more of this kind of content on a weekly basis, of course and hit the bell if you feel super strongly about it. You know, I thought about trying to make a top 10 list out of this, like the top 10 ways high-speed rail beats air travel, but it just made way more sense to attack this chronologically and just kind of walk through step-by-step step how high-speed rail will change the calculus of travel in the United States. In an earlier video, we talked about how high-speed rail is clearly superior to air travel if you're in that sweet range of 200 to 300 miles and how the benefits decline the further away you get from that optimal range. So whether high-speed rail is the right choice for a particular trip really does depend on a lot of variables. And one of these is, where are you located specifically in a metropolitan area, especially a spread out one like LA, which by reputation is a sprawling, gridlocked hellscape with bad transit service. So today we're gonna to take a closer look at California high-speed rail, dive into the numbers and assumptions about how the service is going to work, and look at how a trip would play out for someone traveling between LA and San Francisco. But to try to keep things realistic, I'm gonna make that someone an extremely average resident of the Los Angeles metropolitan area. Remember, the city proper of Los Angeles has just under 4 million people in it. But the LA combined statistical area, which includes, you know, Orange County, the Inland Empire, has just under 19 million people in it. So the way I thought about this is, I want the median person out of that 19 million geographically. And to me, you'll get Los Angeles County, which is about 10 million people. So I want someone in Los Angeles County, not San Bernardino or Riverside or Orange. But I want that person to be out on the periphery of Los Angeles County. And since LA kind of spreads to the east and the south, somebody kind of in deep south, southeast Los Angeles County. So really, it has to be West Covina. And I'm not gonna cherry pick a particular place in West Covina. I'm just gonna put West Covina in the Google search box and whatever Google tells me, that's where my hypothetical person is gonna be. So that's our starting point. And the finish line is, let's just say it's an important lunch meeting downtown San Francisco. So we wanna be in the financial district by noon on a weekday. So we'll just put financial district in the Google search box and whatever Google tells us in its infinite wisdom, that's where we're gonna go. And it turns out it's the Embarcadero Center. Just a note, as always in these videos, the data I'm using is just pulling from publicly available information on the web, but how I use it is based on the logic and assumptions that make sense to me personally. Your mileage may vary, so get down in the comments if you've got other ideas. So let's get into it. So this video is gonna be split up into two sections. One is the trip planning you do ahead of time, and two is the actual experience of the trip. But before we get into trip planning, let's just dispense with the idea of driving to San Francisco. I know there are people out there who will do this. There's some people out there who like driving. I don't really get that. So Google says they give you a pretty wide range. It's between a five hour, 40 minute and a seven and a half hour drive if you want to get to San Francisco by noon. And then after all that, I'm gonna have to find a place to park in downtown San Francisco. Now, maybe I'm the weird one, but I don't think being behind the wheel for six to eight hours driving in California traffic is probably the best way to put me in the frame of mind for an important meeting. So driving's out. So let's start with planning air travel. And keep in mind that experience from other countries shows that once you introduce high-speed rail as an option, the number of available flights drops pretty significantly. But for this exercise, we're gonna go ahead and plan our trip as if all of the flight options that are available today are still available when high-speed rail is an option. So let's work backwards from our noon meeting. Uh, if you remember in a previous video, we looked at all the different ways you can fly between the LA area and the Bay area, all the different airport combinations. There are about 150 flights a day. But what we're really looking for now is a flight that gets us into SFO or Oakland by 11 o'clock just to give ourselves some buffer and some travel time to get downtown. 
So let's look at our flight options. From LAX, our best flight gets us into SFO at 9.53, and our best flight into Oakland gets us in at 10.20. So we're gonna look at that Oakland flight. For Long Beach, there are no direct flights into San Francisco. There is a flight that gets us into Oakland at 10.05, so let's keep that on the list. From Ontario, which is actually our closest airport, the best flight into SFO gets in at 7.50. That's not really gonna work. The best flight gets us into Oakland at nine o'clock, which is kind of on the early side too. From Santa Ana, there's a flight that gets into SFO at 10.41, pretty good. And a flight that gets us into Oakland at 10.55, that's a lot better. And then from Burbank, we have a flight that gets us into SFO at 8.40 and one that gets us into Oakland at 10.55. That's pretty promising too. So already we see some pretty promising options, but now let's work backwards again and see the travel time from West Covina to the different airports. First of all, I'm not gonna waste time showing you the transit options. I looked at all the transit options from West Covina to the different airports and predictably they are just not good. So we're gonna call a taxi or a ride hail instead. Now remember, we wanna to get to the airport an hour early to account for getting through TSA, which can be unpredictable, and for the boarding process, which is 30 plus minutes. If you were on a trip where you were checking baggage, you probably want to add like another 30 minutes on top of that. So for a weekday morning, I looked at the Google Maps travel times for the specific time I wanted to arrive at a particular airport. I get a range of 50 to 90 minutes to LAX, 35 to 65 minutes to Long Beach, 20 to 30 minutes to Ontario, which would be great if there was a great flight out at the time we wanted. 50 to 100 minutes if we're gonna fly out of Santa Ana and 40 to 75 minutes to go out of Burbank. I'm gonna use the high side of these travel time ranges just because if you've got some more important you need to get to, you probably wanna assume the worst and work from there. So when we run the numbers, the flight we want, it has to be Burbank to Oakland. Flight's at 9.40, we wanna be at the airport by 8.40. The drive is 75 minutes, so we wanna be out the door of our house by 7.25, which beats the heck out of leaving at like four in the morning to drive to San Francisco. But I'm just gonna pause here to say that, you know, this is all imaginary and hypothetical. I don't live in West Covina or even California, but I'm just stressed out thinking about all the traffic and logistics and all the things that could go wrong between my front door and getting to Embarcadero Center. Before we get into looking at train travel time. So if you've been following along, at this point, you've seen it. I analyze some stuff, I give you some tables and numbers and just try to share a different perspective. So if you're enjoying watching anywhere near as much as I'm enjoying making these videos, go ahead and subscribe. It'll get my stuff onto your homepage as soon as it comes out and it'll help boost the channel. So now let's plan our high-speed rail trip. First of all, the trip planning is kind of drastically simplified. You're gonna leave from your closest rail station, which in this case is downtown LA's Union Station. But depending on where you are in the LA area, it could be Burbank or Fullerton or the Anaheim Transit Center. Now, we don't know what a California high-speed rail timetable is gonna look like. We know that there is a commitment to run service from Union Station to Trans Bay Terminal in downtown San Francisco in under two hours and 40 minutes. And there's a lot of skepticism about that. I mean, how are you gonna run it in 240 when you have all these stops between San Francisco and LA? And we don't know how frequent the service is gonna be. But let's dig a little further. As part of the High Speed Rail Authority's 2020 business plan update, they provide a service planning methodology as part of the technical appendix. And it includes service assumptions that feed into the ridership and the revenue and the cost modeling. So if you look at the service assumed for the modeling, you can see that they're assuming 53 trains a day from Union Station to Transbay Terminal, but they have different stop patterns. Some of them are nonstop, only six a day, and 16 a day are kind of milk runs. They stop at pretty much every possible stop along the way, so they're gonna be slower. But that leaves 37 trains a day that are either nonstop or making limited stops. So they're probably gonna run pretty close to three hours if we assume four minutes of travel time penalty per stop. 
So while it's possible that only six trains a day will make that run in two hours, 40 minutes, there are something like 30 additional trains a day that will probably be making the run in a little under three hours. So like with the plane, let's work backwards. Embarcadero Center is about a 10 minute walk from the Trans Bay Terminal. Remember, this is part of the beauty of high-speed rail. You can't locate an airport downtown, but a train station, if you look at high-speed rail systems, they're nearly always located downtown. And then high-speed trains running on their own tracks are super reliable. So you can be pretty sure the train is gonna get in when the timetable says it will, unlike airplanes. So you just need to pick a train that's gonna get in by 1140. So if 36, 38 trains a day, those are probably running every 20 minutes or so during peak daytime hours. So to be safe, let's get to Union Station by 820 and we can just get on the next train. So again, let's work backwards on accessing the station. In the case of Union Station, you know, transit's a lot more competitive. It is the hub of LA's transit network. And even though there isn't a good train from Central West Covina, there is a bus. It runs on the El Monte Busway, which is kind of an interesting facility in itself. One of the first dedicated busways in the United States. So the bus we want is the Silver Streak. It makes that run in 46 minutes. So really, we need to be out the door a little after 7.30. Remember, if you live close to downtown LA, you're gonna get a lot more travel time advantage. So our departure time, it's a little better with the high-speed rail, but that's not really what's selling it. What's really selling it is the experience of the trip. So on your airplane trip, you are going to be either slogging through security or waiting in the waiting area or boarding the plane for the vast majority of the trip. You're really only gonna have maybe an hour of your flight time undisturbed where you might be able to do something productive. It's not gonna be pleasant. On the train, you're gonna have a solid two and a half hours of time with elbow room, space to get up and walk around. If you are some kind of professional that bills on an hourly basis, you could probably get two and a half hours of billable work done if you're not working that kind of a job, it's still two and a half hours where you can get things done that you would normally want to get done with your day. Kind of dug into the Texas Central Rail documentation. They do a good job of kind of comparing what the interior of the vehicle looks like and how much more space there is for rail travel than for plane travel. It just makes a huge difference. And then you can get up and walk around, you can go get food, you can stretch, you can go make phone calls. You know, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got 5G. You don't really have that on an airplane flight. So really, even though the distance from LA to San Francisco on the high-speed rail route is verging on 400 miles, which is a little on the high side for what you want for high-speed rail, it's still a better option travel time-wise even if you live in West Covina. And that's all I've got today. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.